thanks for checking back in. I mentioned in a prior video that I would share my process for integrating fixtures into the CAM workflow in Fusion 360. So here we go, let's get into it. First off, I want to start by bringing my fixture model into the design I plan to generate CAM for. In one of my first videos, which is linked in the top corner, I shared how I generally create a new document just to set up my CAM and derive in the specific components that I need in order to reduce the processing burden on my computer. So we're going to follow that same process again here. I always add in a model of the stock size of the material I plan to cut parts from. I think it is overall the best strategy for generating any CAM toolpath, but especially helps when integrating a fixture into your workflow. Now that I have my bodies to be machined and a fixture I loaded into a standalone design, I need to assemble them as I plan to mill them on my machine. I've got a pretty comprehensive assembly model of my vise that allows me to easily slide the jaws around and will adjust as needed when I use joints to place the stock in the jaws. This might be overkill for some, and if you wanted to keep it simple, you could get away with just having two models that represent each of the jaws of your fixture and joint to each of them separately. When I'm creating operations here in a little bit, I will show you how it has the same effect if you model the full fixture versus just the jaws. First off, I like to joint the fixture to the origin of the new design so that it matches the coordinate system of how it is installed on my machine. Then I make sure to ground that component. Next, I want to make sure that the stock that I modeled and the machining components that I plan to use are a rigid grouping so they move together when I index them to the jaws of the vise. So I'm going to grab the center of my stock and create a rigid joint with the fixed jaw of my vise. Following, I'm going to create the same type of joint on my moving jaw of my vise. All right, so we have a model that represents how we plan to load our stock into the machine. Now we need to tell Fusion what all these different models are. Let's jump into our manufacturing workspace. So I want to create a new setup. As you can see, since I placed my fixture as it is loaded in the machine in the design workspace, my X, Y, and Z of the work coordinate system are already aligned as I need them. The next thing we need to do is identify the parts to be machined and the fixture. To do that, in the model dropdown, I'm going to select the two bodies that are my final parts. Then I need to turn on the fixture feature. And I'm going to select the model of my vise. So in here, I can also show an example of how I referenced earlier that you could just model the jaws of your fixture. So instead of picking the entire vise, I'm going to pick just the jaws that I know are going to be holding my workpiece. Lastly, I need to go into my stock tab, and the modes I'm going to go from solid. And I'm going to select the body that I modeled for my stock. So one trick that I use on my machine, which might save you some time depending on how you have your fixture set up, is to use an alternative work coordinate setup. So on my machine, I've dialed in the corner of my vise right here to be my second work coordinate system or G55 in my machine. If we go into the post-process tab of the setup here, I'm going to adjust my work coordinate system offset to two. Then I go back into my setup, and for my work coordinate system origin, I'm going to select selected point, and I'm going to pick this point right here on my vise that I know I've set as my work coordinate system G55. What this will do is when I post-process my program, it's going to use G55 as opposed to G54. And because my CNC controller knows exactly where G55 is, all I need to do is ensure that my Z0 is set up at that point with the tool I have loaded. And X and Y will already be set from that point. I can then load my stock in reference to that point on the vise of my machine. I think overall this is beneficial since I know exactly where my vise is on my machine. I can generate my cam to make sure that I work around that solid fixture. All right, let's take a look at the differences of what I call fixture aware operations and fixture avoiding operations. I'm sure Fusion has a fancier term for it, but it's how I like to reference them. Overall, these are some pretty simple parts as far as geometry goes. So there are really two different ways I could go about clearing out most of the stock material. I could use a 2D adaptive, which generally can be a bit simpler to configure and faster to generate, or a 3D adaptive, 
which is very capable, but sometimes can be overly complicated for simple parts. However, when I begin to integrate fixtures into my cam, there are now additional reasons why I might use one over the other. Let's start off by looking at a simple 2D adaptive and show it is only aware of the fixture when generating toolpaths. Let's start off by looking at a simple 2D adaptive and show how it is only aware of the fixture when generating toolpaths. So I already have this 2D operation loaded. And in my geometry tab, you can see I only had to select the four contours of the different levels on the part that I wanted to have machined. However, what you won't notice in this tab is any reference to the fixture. That's okay. This operation is still aware of the fixture since we identified it in our setup. So let's take a look at what I mean when I say aware. Now, if I just take a quick look at my tool paths for this operation, I can immediately see I'm going to have issues with my tool running into my fixture. Now, if we go into a simulation of this operation, we can see the red bars that Fusion is spitting out a warning for us for the tool path at those points. If we hover over them, we now see what the warning is. Tool collides with fixture. So again, the 2D adaptive is only aware of our fixture and gives us a warning if we we're gonna collide with it. A nice feature, but will require some manual tuning of your operations to avoid the fixture. Now let's take a look at where I think Fusion really shines when integrating your fixturing into your cam. 3D adaptive tool paths are more than just aware of the fixture. They inherently avoid the fixture. So here I have a second setup, which is identical to the one we just looked at. In there, I have a 3D adaptive tool path. Within the geometry tab, you can see again, it is quite simple. I don't even have to select the contours I want machined. This can be very nice, but can become quite a bit more complicated when you only want to use 3D adaptive on a portion of a more complex model. What is critical here is the model section. Typically, you would select the body of the models you want the adaptive path to mill out. But when integrating a fixture, you actually want to select the model of the fixture itself. Again, if you have a full-up model like I do, you can select the entire component. Or if you want to keep it simple, you can just select the jaws. The most important step here is selecting the Include Setup Model checkbox. This will tell Fusion that the model selected is actually the fixture, not the model to be machined. A very important step. Now, when we go and look at the tool pass generated, we can immediately see a huge difference. You will see that the toolpath is actively avoiding the jaws of my vise. This is even more apparent if I go to the next operation and look at the in-process stock. The toolpath has clearly avoided the vise jaws and is leaving that material behind. This is the most advantageous part of integrating your fixture into CAM and utilizing the 3D collection of operations as opposed to sticking with 2D operations. Now I'm not going to go in depth on this topic in this video, but Fusion also has a very neat feature that will carry the stock over into a follow-on setup. And this is great for a part like this when I haven't fully removed all of the material for my final part in the first setup. I need to flip the stock in my vise and finish the operations for all the features. What I didn't show earlier is that I added an additional vise to my model that is flipped 180 degrees. This vise is jointed to the model on the surfaces that are machined in my first operation. What I've done now is create a setup, and in that setup for the stock tab, in the mode, I've set to from preceding setup. And I also need to check the box for continuous rest machining. So now when I select my new setup, it carries over the stock as it was machined from the original operation. Now when I generate operations to complete out the features on my part, it will only remove the remaining stock material and won't perform a bunch of air cutting. Because I've identified my new flip vise as the fixture in this setup, Fusion will again be aware of the vise when I create these new operations. Not really an issue in this setup, as I've already removed the material that will interact with the jaws of the vise. Hopefully I was able to help simplify and provide a good example of the process of integrating your fixtures and work holding into your cam generation in Fusion 360. I personally think this is a huge benefit to optimizing your tool path, as well as avoiding major collisions on your machine. Again, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you find this content helpful, and don't hesitate to leave a comment. Ask if there are special features in Fusion you would like to see covered.